all is dust, the war cry of the Thousand Sons. They were the most powerful psychers amongst the Astartes legions, and led by the most gifted of psychers among the Primarch brothers, Magnus the Red. But for their gifts, they were also cursed. They suffered from an affliction known as the Flesh Change, causing them to become grotesque abominations through the prolonged use of psychic energies from the war. And this also caused a rift of distrust between their brother legions, particularly the Space Wolves, who would later become bitter enemies. Some legions, such as the Imperial Fists and the Raven Guard, went as far as to refuse to deploy their formations alongside the Thousand Suns, citing their unpredictability. After the Council of Nikea, where the Emperor decreed that the Astartes legions could no longer train librarians, the Thousand Suns were effectively hamstrung and were faced with a difficult choice. A choice that the Space Wolves would help them make. Now there's way too much backstory on the Thousand Suns to go through on this intro, but check out some of the lore videos I've posted in the description below. And also the books Thousand Suns and the Burning of Prospero. For this colour scheme I'm going to show you how to paint the metallic crimson of the Thousand Suns. This is a relatively easy paint scheme and just requires the use of a contrast paint and a metallic base coat. Now let's get started. So I prime these models in light grey in preparation for this next step, which is to give them a gold base layer. And the gold I'm going to be using is Thalax Gold, a Citadel air paint. Now I'm not sure if Games Workshop still actually sell this paint, but some online retailers still hold stock of this. And it's quite good, so if you can find it, grab a couple of pots. And I'm just going to completely coat this model in this gold. And our next colour will be Blood Angels Red from Citadel Contrast. And I'm using this because it's super transparent and it's going to give us that candy red look. There's some really nice enamel paints you can get to run through your airbrush and it'll give you this candy red in one paint but I don't really like putting those enamels through my airbrush just because the paint's clean. This is just a nice easy water based version. And as you can see that's given us a nice metallic red which is going to suit these Thousand Suns models perfectly. The next stage is to get all the trim painted so I'm going to be using this Scale 75 Viking Gold for this. And along with all the usual parts such as the shoulder pads and all the banding, I'm also going to be painting the face plate of this. Just to break up this red a bit, seeing as there are three red factions in the Horus Heresy. And along with the face plate, I'm also going to be painting the gun barrel and all the other metallic parts of the bolt rifle gold. Leaning pretty heavily into that real Egyptian aesthetic. Now on the small parts of this model, you can get away with one coat, but on the flatter areas, two coats is definitely needed. And not forgetting the casing on the chainsaw, of course. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can fill in all these rivets too. And for our second metallic, we're using our trusty gunmetal grey from Vallejo Metal Colour. And this is for all the exhaust vents on the backpack, and all the little cables and other doodads that are on the back of this model, and the teeth for that ferocious chainsaw. And I find the easiest way to do this is to just drag your brush along that recess, just picking out the teeth. For this white bolt gun casing, we're going to be starting off with a dark grey, and this is Mechanicus Standard Grey. And this is almost how you should always paint white, so you start with a grey. Now you don't necessarily have to start this dark, but the darker you start, the smoother your white is going to look. And the idea is, is to build this up over two or three layers, finishing in a light grey. And you only use actual white on the very sharpest of edges. Just because white is at the end of the colour spectrum, thus leaving you no room for highlights. And light greys generally just read better as white. And you don't have to worry about being too neat at this stage because we can clean up the gold or the grey later. And once that first coat's dry, we're going to go over it with a coat of Celestial Grey, and this time really thin. And give this about two or three coats. And as this dries, it should look nice and smooth because of those thin coats. And they decided to repeat this process on the knee pad and the shoulder pad. Again, just to break up that red a little bit more. And now we're finished with our base colours, we're going to start washing this model. And starting with the white areas, we're going to be washing it with Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a blue wash and I'm going to be thinning it down about 50% with water. If we didn't thin this down so much, it would be too strong and just end up changing the colour to blue. When what we really want is a light bluey grey shadow. And we will be coming back to clean this up later. Next wash will be Agrax Earthshade and this is going to be going over all the gold areas. You can use Reichland Flesh Shade for this as well but sometimes I like to mix it up with this Agrax seen as I usually tend to use the Reichland Flesh Shade. And 
while we're washing with this color, we're going to be slightly overlapping onto the red just to give us a nice little dark border between the two colors. And on the faceplate, I'll be going a little bit heavy just to fill in all those little vent holes. Earlier, I filled these eye lenses in with the Celestial Grey, and now I'm just going to wash over them with this Bale Tan Green. This is just a super simple method for painting Space Marine eye lenses. Because this wash will naturally sit in the recesses and be a darker colour, it will look like you've done some highlights on this, when really you've just done one little dab of wash. And now we're done with our washes, I'm just going to clean up these areas with the Celestial Grey again. Just one more really thin coat should fix this up. And once that's all fixed up, we can give it a nice thin edge highlight with just pure white, any white will do. And I'm just going to pick out the hard edges of this bulk gun casing. Then just some minor highlights on the chainsaw handle. To highlight the gold, I'm going to be using this Liberator Gold from Citadel. This is probably one of my favourite gold highlighting colours. Just because of the high pigment count and it's really smooth to put on too. And also the other bright golds that I have in my inventory seem to be either too bright or too dark. This is just a nice happy medium. And I'm just going to be doing some simple highlights along the edges of the shoulder pads, that ridge on the faceplate and all the little rivets as well. And then just moving on to any hard edges you can find on the bulk gun, such as the magazine and the barrel. And for our final highlight, we're just going to be using this drawer aluminium just to pick out some of the dark metallic edges. These Vallejo metal color colors are really strong, so just go a bit sparing with them and make sure you clean your brushes afterwards. These paints contain actual bits of metal, so it's really worth giving a good clean afterwards. And then we're pretty much done for the main colors on this model, it's time to move on to the base. For this model, I wanna make a desert base, and I'm gonna be starting with this AK Interactive Natural Texture. You can get this in a sand color, but I tend to prefer the white because then you can color it whatever color you want. And just use a little bit of water so you can spread it around a bit easily. And once that's dried, we're going to be using Zandri Dust for our sand color. And you may need a couple of thin coats for this just to get into all the little nooks and crannies. And the thinner the paint is, the more it's going to flow into all those little grains. And just color it a little bit more opaque. Though. And once that's dried, just give it a wash with Riken Flesh Shade. Straight out of the pot, no need to mess about with palettes at this stage. And then just finish it off with a nice dry brush of a Shabti bone. And there we have our Thousand Suns Legionnaire. Now I get a couple of questions asking about how I attach these models to these bases and I'll just use a little dab of super glue. I just find that so much easier than pinning them. If it was a super complicated base then I probably would opt for the pinning method using bits of paper clip and super glue. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can use these methods for painting your Thousand Suns army. And you can even use this method for painting the 40k version just replacing the red with a nice turquoise blue. And as usual if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for some more content. Next up we'll be doing a joint video of Lunar Wolves and Sons of Horus. See you next time.